So today I'm doing a full planes guide with everything that you need to know in order to find a planes and explore it safely. There will be chapters in the video, so if you want to skip ahead to the bits relevant to you, please feel free to do so, but let's get started. So the first thing to talk about is how you're actually going to find the planes biome in the first place. And on this map right here, I've actually loaded the entire map so you can see really easily what sort of generation you're going to get. Now, of course, this will vary slightly from seed to seed, but the general principle is the same in that you have your center islands and it's unlikely, although not impossible, that you'll have land connected to a plains biome. What is much more likely is you'll have to travel to a plains biome by sea. Now, all of these sort of light brown colored biomes right here are the plains, of course. So they're sort of in a ring that goes around from your starter biome. And when you sail around, you will probably come to one sooner or later. Now, what I'm actually going to do later in this video is give you guys a bit of a guide on how you should approach when sailing to a plains biome as it's not as simple as just sailing right to it because there are ways that if you do that you could die and lose your stuff okay so now we're going to talk about the preparation required before you go to a plains biome and in my opinion there are two real ways that you can do this essentially you're going to the plains to get yourself better materials so you can have better weapons tools armor food and all of that good stuff now in order to get to a plains as we said you are going to need to sail across to it more than likely and so there's going to be a bit of travel involved now when this comes into play is when you start getting into the black metal screen scraps which we'll see later on in today's video and at that point you have two options either you sail the black metal from say here your planes right here back to your main base if you have a lot of things set up there where you can have a fully upgraded forge to get yourself the best weapons and tools and things like that in the game the other option is to have a bit of a planes base now this is kind of going to be necessary regardless of whether you do option one or option two because you'll at least need a planes base in order to make a farming area so what i'm going to do is assume for this video that you're going to be making a planes base and i reckon the best way to do that is in two trips and i'll come on to why that is in a second and if not and you're just doing a base at your house and you're going to get the black metal from the planes back to your house then trip one remains the same so trip one base and locks is what i call it we want to get ourselves a foothold into the plane so that we can portal back there whenever we want so if we die we can get back quickly to recover our things and also so that when we're not doing black metal uh trips where we have to teleport that stuff because obviously it won't teleport, you know, we have to transport that stuff, then we can get to and from nice and easily. So this is how I like to do it. Go to the base, uh, go get a base set up in the plains. And to do that, the first thing you need is a long ship, which will require these resources. The 10 wood here is for the workbench, and these here are to actually build the long ship. Now, I recommend a long ship for this trip. Although it's not technically essential, you could build one of the calves. Uh, the long ship is a bit faster if you want to escape from a sea serpent. It also has much better durability if you're attacked by a sea serpent or if it gets attacked by fuelings or something like that once you land on the plane's biome and also it has tons of extra storage space so i would recommend going for that the next thing is to have these materials here for a portal again this 10 here is for the workbench these are the materials for the portals now i say portals because of course you can only use half these materials to build a portal at your base called planes or whatever you want to call it and then when you get to the planes you can make another portal so you're instantly able to teleport home if that's something that you want to do now in terms of protecting yourself we're going to come onto armor in a different section but the other ways of protecting yourself the most important thing is the shield and the best shield that you can really take to the planes before you've explored it and that sort of thing is going to be the silver shield now this one right here is going to give you a lot of protection and also the ability to parry which could be very useful later on i think in particular this one's going to be useful for trip number two as i'll come on to later on in this video however it's not a bad thing to take it for trip one if you can with the second best in my opinion being the serpent scale shield for trip one the reason being guys trip one as i said here it's base and it's locks and what i mean by that is in my opinion the best thing to do is go on trip one get that foothold in the plains biome and start getting some better resources in particular fit focusing on locks because the locks meat is going to be very useful for you to have better health i also think you can look at killing death mosquitoes but some people are a bit intimidated by them again we are going to come on to that but in terms of protecting yourself shields are definitely something you should prioritize and the minimum that i would say you should go with is one of the banded iron shields um, and again the ability to parry with this could be preferable depending on how you like to play the game but having a serpent shield will give you a lot of protection against any sort of attack from deskitos or fueling see my troll armor was upgraded to level two but even so there is a massive jump if you can go to wolf you see here a level one troll tunic armor of six and the wolf is an armor of 20 and the pants are the same the wolf armor legs so wolf armor you know bringing wolves is not that difficult i've got a video on my channel showing you how to do it and you can breed them up to get all of the resources for this 
and give yourself a better armor. And I did have the Drake helmet, which is another good piece of armor. So in doing that, it's probably the best bet for you. Um, the reason I like troll armor is because you can run a bit quicker. So again, personal preference comes into this, but Wolf is pretty good and only has a movement speed reduction of 5%, which is not too bad. Now, this bit I cannot stress enough. The rested buff is huge. Get as rested as you possibly can. Get your comfort, excuse me, get your comfort as high as you possibly can in order that you are going to recover faster and just have a much better chance of surviving longer in the planes. Again, video on my channel on how to get full comfort level if you're interested in that. Now, when you get to the planes, this is the minimum goal, in my opinion, which is this little setup right here we can see that we've got the workbench behind the portal and it is all protected you need to protect it because otherwise the feelings and things will attack your portal and you may not be able to return so this setup right here needs exactly 50 wood so that is all the stuff around the outside you see here plus the 10 for the workbench so i would say as you know this is the minimum right this is what you should be looking to go for if you want to make a bigger base you can do that and make moats and that sort of thing but again for the first trip we're just trying to get there get our foot in and then we can return later incidentally you can see from my food here i maxed out about 196 and my stamina is absolutely insane so that is why if you can get those three food options that i mentioned before they are going to be incredibly useful for your planes uh, trip and make things a lot easier so we're now going to talk about what happens when you arrive at the planes for the very first time and there's a planes right there in front of us we're going to keep our distance for a second and discuss a couple of things first thing is it's much better if you can arrive during the daytime now you don't have tons of control over this but you do have a little bit because as you're sailing to the planes you're going to find lots of different things along the way different islands and that sort of thing and if it's starting to get dark, you can pull up in a safe island, it's like a meadows, a black forest, something like that. Teleport home, go and have a sleep to make it daytime again, and then teleport back again, pick your things up, and carry on through. Now, when you arrive at the plains, you do need to be careful, because if you get too close to the plains land, Devskitos can fly out and attack you, which can be a little bit dangerous and a little bit of a pain. Now, what I suggest is if you look at the map here, you'll find that almost every plains biome you come to is going to have some sort of neighboring biome. It could be a meadows, it could be a black forest, it could be a swamp, but whatever it is, I guarantee you it's going to be an easier biome than the plains because that is probably the most difficult biome. Now, this one right here, you can see in front of us, there is a black forest biome, and there's even a bit of meadows in there when I was looking at this earlier. So what I recommend at this point is we're going to sell over to the black forest biome, and that's where we're going to make our base at this point because then we're going to be much safer and when we come back we're going to have less to worry about immediately and so it's just a better idea so if you can do that and you probably will be able to do that then i recommend it if for some reason you're not able to do that and you've literally got an island that's just planes that you want to land at it's not the end of the world just be very careful when you're going in and i would like basically get like this at this stage so the boat's still heading in if we imagine this was the planes in front of us and just have a scout around and if there's anything there that's a fueling or a death skito take some shots at it and try to kill them and you can always get back on your boat and back out a little bit if you're not feeling entirely safe once you do get to land of course your objective at this point is to make the portal as quickly as possible so that you can return home get it protected and uh, then you can go home and sleep or get more resources if you need them uh, or you can start exploring the planes and of course we're going to talk about that in just a second so the dangerous planes biome guys let's talk about how we should explore it and some of the creatures that you will find when exploring i recommend that you start off by having your melee and your shield ready to go and you can press r to run around with them but basically if you see anything coming you can quickly get your shield out and protect yourself if needs be now we're going to talk first about the death ski because they are probably one of if not the most dangerous creature in the plains biome i'm going to go find one and then show you how to deal with it in today's video i'm of course able to edit so i don't look like a total noob but if you want to see me die over and over and over again in the plains biome then do check out my twitch <laughs> link is down in the description and every time i go there it's a bit of a disaster but i hope to see you there and hang out a little bit come say hello but let's get back to the video okay so just up there there is a death skito i might have to zoom in uh, on this but I, I can see this and in game you'll be able to see this from afar now one of the best things you can do is before the death skito even sees you you can zoom in on it and try and take a bit of a shot at it and that one flew away just before i got to it let's try this again here we go We'll get there in a second, but it might take you a lot of arrows, but there we go. We took him out. Of course, this will uh, depend on how good you are at archery. What is that lox doing up there? <laughs> I've never seen... This might not be PG at this point. Uh... Let's, let's move on. Okay, so ignoring that locks over there. The other thing is uh, sometimes a Death Skeeter will see you and start to circle you and attack you. So I'm going to try and get that to happen uh, with this guy up here. Here we go. Oh, I need to get myself out of Ghost. 
Okay, so here we go. He's now going to... There we go. He's seen me. He's going to come attack. So when he comes in, you see they fly in at you? You can kind of take a shot of them just like I did there. Now, you're not always going to have the luxury of seeing it like that. Obviously, me being uh, in Ghost and that sort of thing really helped out. So what I'm going to do now is just find another one and show you what to do if you end up getting a bit of an attack by one first because then they will start to circle you. Okay, there was one just over this hill somewhere. I think there's a Deskuto just here. There he is. Okay. So when he comes in, you might just see it like that and be able to block at the last second. And what he's going to do now is circle around you. Now, what I like to do at this point is get my bow out. Just get ready until I think he's about to come in. And they do get close. You want to try and stay away from them. And there we go. He's coming in. And boom. Now, that makes the shot a lot easier, in my opinion. So what you can do is just wait for them to come in. Wait for that opportune moment to shoot at them. However, some people prefer to block them and give them a hit. Uh, I guess this comes down to personal preference, but let me find another one and show you about that. Okay, so here's another Deskito. Let's get him to lock onto us. There we go. So when they come in, some people like to just block them and then give them a hit. And this isn't a terrible plan either. I guess it just depends on what you feel more comfortable with, and you should play to your own strengths in this game. Incidentally, Deskutos will drop needles. Uh, these can be used to make needle arrows, which are the highest piercing arrows in the game. And they also have a slim chance uh, drop of a Deskuto trophy. So next up we have Lox. And uh, Lox are probably one of my most favorite animals in the game because they are just pretty beautiful looking. And also they give you some pretty awesome drops. So once again, I'm going to take myself out of Ghost here, if I can spell Ghost. There we go. And uh, at this stage, if we walk up to a Lox, you'll see they will get uh, attention and they'll come at you now they're reasonably slow this is just me walking right now and the dude is struggling to get to me when they charge at you they are a bit quicker though but when you get near let's have a look at their attacks so basically that's one of them right they'll trample like that and when they do that you can get oh okay there we go so he's charging now so i had to sprint but yeah when they trample you can get rocks and things there from them doing the trample thing like like this there we go you see all the rocks now let me uh just keep doing this until i can see him do his second attempted attack Okay, there was the second attack right there. So he sort of like bites you, right? It like comes in and bites you and then he'll stomp. So those are the two different attacks for them. Now, in terms of fighting these things, the easiest way to do it really is from range. You just literally shoot at them and uh, keep running away when he gets so close. Once he stops like that to stomp, he's going to be there for a good while, right? So then we can run away, let him get close where he's going to attack. And then there we go. Once he starts to attack... It slows him down so much that we can get away and shoot some more. And this is where having good stamina really is going to help. Now, you see there's a Death Skeeter as well. Okay, so you got to be... <laughs> that's why I like to range them. But you gotta, you got to be careful with them. Um, obviously, Death Skeeters and Fuelings and stuff like that are still going to attack you, even when a Lox is. So you do need to keep your wits about you when in the planes. But this is probably the best way to attack them. And of course, if I had uh, done this properly, what I would do is start the attack uh, where I actually shoot the Lox before it can see me and has got my attention, right? And so if I go... Back to this group of locks over here. I can show you one of those. So this one right here has not seen us. So when I shoot him, we're going to do a fair bit of damage there. Plus, we're able to get a good load of hits in on him as he's coming towards me. Now, right now, I do have my skills. This is my cheat world fully upgraded. So this is making it look a lot easier than it is. So I want you guys to be aware of that. Um, but definitely having the Dragon Fang bow and a decent load of arrows is going to really help you with killing the locks. Now, incidentally, even if you block a locks' attack with a shield and uh, a good level of blocking power and stuff, they are still going to do quite a big attack against you. So you do want to be careful with that. Now, they will drop uh, locks meat and also locks pelt, which are two useful resources especially the lox meat because uh, you can make some really good food from that and as i say that is one of the reasons i think you want to do the planes in two trips one is you come along the first time you get the good resources including the lox meat now as for lox uh, they can be tamed but not bred um you can uh, you can tame them by feeding them cloud berries but uh, it's a bit of a faff to go to for something that is basically just a pet and cannot be bred all right the next thing to talk about are these things these are the fueling villages and fuelings, these guys are tough. They can hit like an absolute train if they get close to you. And you get different types. These ones right here, which have the sort of club and the shield and that sort of thing. And you also get these ones, that one down there. Yeah, there we go, the spears. And they will throw spears at you. These are super dangerous. You want to stay pretty far away from them and range them. So if I'm going to take on a camp like this, I would come up here. This is actually perfect. We've got the high ground up here. And I would do a lot of sneak range attacks on these guys before I look to go into the village. Because if you have five or six of these coming at you all at once, you are really going to be in a difficult situation. Now, the fuelings will drop coins, black metal scraps, and also fueling trophies. So you do get great drops from them, which is sort of worth the risk, I guess, of how dangerous they are. 
Now, on top of the fuelings, we have some other dudes here. You see this big dude right here. This is a fueling berserker, like a giant fueling with a big old club. So these guys, I mean, if the fuelings hit like a train, this hits like a train on steroids. They will really do some damage when they hit you. They will roar. And when they do, they're about to do three big hits with their hammer. I'm on ghost mode right now, which is why it's not attacking me, if you are wondering that, by the way. So you definitely don't want to let these guys hit you. You want to range them for your attacks against them, because if they get too close, they're going to do some serious damage. Incidentally, the berserkers will also drop black metal scraps and coins. Uh, they also have a rare chance of dropping a fueling totem and a fueling berserker trophy. So that's another way you can get totems in the game. We're going to come on to totems a little bit more in just a second. So the third type of fueling and... Uh, one of the uh, most annoying is the fueling shamans that you see right here carrying these shaman stick type of things right um, now when you're going to attack a fueling village uh, you again you do want to do it from range and you want to take out the shaman first because they'll actually spawn shields around the other fuelings that will protect them and you have to break down those shields first so they're pretty they're pretty nasty um so they can shield themselves and the other fuelings basically and then they will shoot fireballs at you which hurt quite a lot if they hit you so the fueling shamans are definitely something to be taken care of as soon as possible now there are a couple good reasons for raiding these villages you might be thinking why do i even want to raid this this is so difficult right um, but first of all from killing all of the fuelings uh, that you see here you will get tons of the black scrap metal so that is obviously very very useful um you know because it's it's such a good resource to have in the game the other thing is you'll get different loot so we see here we've got some chests here and uh, in fact we've even got some of the black metal scraps in here as well as some coins and things you get all different things in here let's see what's in this one probably some needles yet yeah, there we go a bit of barley there as well so you can get some really good resources from raiding these villages um they'll also have farms right here so we can pick up like the flax for example right there the flax and the barley i'm going to come on to that a bit more in a second uh, and the final thing you can get is totems let me find a totem and i'll show you what one of those looks like here we go so we have a fueling totem right here so we can go ahead and uh, pick this up and uh, the fueling totem so there it is in our inventory. It looks like this. Uh, these are used to spawn in Yagluth. So that's why you are going to need to raid these things, essentially, if you want to complete the game and if you want to kill Yagluth or uh, at least spawn Yagluth in. So that's why we raid these villages. Now, some of the resources you will get from being in a plains in general, one of them are the cloudberries right here. So cloudberries have a few different uses, really. Um, they are used for the fire resistance, barley wine, the locks meat pie, and also the medium stamina mead. Plus, you can actually use them to tame locks so they're reasonably useful little things to have and you'll only find them in the black foot not the black forest the plains the plains by <laughs> the other thing of course is all the black metal scraps you'll get from killing all the fuelings and from raiding the fueling uh villages and the chests and stuff inside them so we talked about that a bit already but of course that's one of the reasons you're coming here um, on top of that there's flax and there's barley so here we go there's barley right here again the villages are a good place to find this stuff right you see there's loads of barley here and if you come over this way there's also some flax now flax and barley can only be farmed in the plains biome as well so if you you guys want to farm this yourself you will need the planes base that i talked about earlier on uh, so flax is used for a spinning wheel to make linen thread which uh, can be used for armor weapons that sort of thing as for barley well that uh, you can use it to make barley flour by using a windmill and uh, you can get the barley wine for fire resistance out of that as well um, both can be fed to locks instantly so uh, yeah that's another like use of the barley and uh, the flax another useful thing about the plains are these things right here these are these giant stone pillar things now the reason these are useful is because with your pickaxe you can mine out the bottom of one of these and once you've mined out the bottom entirely so no part of it is touching the floor everything above it will crumble and you'll get tons and tons of stone very very quickly now finding a lot of them together can be a little bit tricky but while you're out exploring and you find these in the plains it could be just a very quick way of getting stone the other thing about the plains is you'll get tons of fine wood here if you want it you'll see there's tons and tons and tons of birch trees here so this again is another use of it you can chop down all of these trees and very quickly build up your fine wood reserves if you need a lot of that for your builds or whatever it is you're doing and the final fantastic reason to come to the plains is to see stonehenge not just for its intrinsic beauty, but more so for this right here, which will give you the Yagluf location. And of course, Yagluf is going to be in the plains somewhere, so you're going to fight Yagluf in the plains later in the game. So the way to find Yagluf, as I say, it's going to be either in Stonehenge like this, or sometimes you'll just see some other sort of random small groups of standing stones, and there could be a Yagluf tablet near there. So do keep a lookout when exploring, and if you see these sort of structures, do check them out. So as I said, I recommend you do two trips. The first one to get your portal set up, and the second one to do something like we've done here, 
where you get yourself a bit of a base set up. Now, obviously, the way you do your base is entirely up to you, but some things to talk about. First of all, having a bit of a moat around the outside is going to keep just about everything away from being able to come over and attack you. And you can do like a little drawbridge system like we've got right here, and you can actually open these up to make sure that no mobs can walk over them. So uh, that means that then the only thing to worry about is mosquitoes coming over to get you, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll just gear up and you'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> so when we're in here, some things, obviously we've got the windmill, you can get a bit of a farm going on here for the barley and the flax and that sort of thing, obviously the only place we're able to grow it. And you can also get yourself a fully upgraded uh, forges, and you've got obviously artisan table here and workbenches and all that sort of stuff, which means we can make all of our uh, armor and tools and stuff like that, the blacker, black metal stuff that we want to make, and then obviously we can teleport with that uh, once we are done. Um, then also what we've got going on up here, well there's a smelting area over here. This is all on Ravenheim, by the way, if you're wondering. So yeah, we've got the smelting area going on over here to smelt down all the ores and stuff that we need for this. And then up the top here, got ourselves a bit of a protected lookout area. And uh, we can come up here and either extend our base or, you know, fight uh, any mobs around here, deskeaters and stuff like that. So this is how I recommend you do it. The first trip, just to get you the locks meat in order to have better food to survive when you're exploring. And also to get you the needles uh, for the needle arrows, because they are also very, very useful in helping to keep you alive and do better attack damage. As a scarecrow, people say I'm outstanding in my field. But hey, it's in my genes. My friend asked me to sign his cast when he broke his arm, and I wrote on there that he was an idiot. He said, well, that's just adding insult to injury. I told my girlfriend she drew her eyebrows too high. She looked surprised. I saw a man in a bar trying to chat up a cheetah. I thought, he's trying to pull a fast one.